want to make 3D printed car parts, but you're afraid they'll fail? So we're going to 3D print and torture test interior, exterior, and even some engine bay parts with different filaments to find out which is the strongest for your next car project. And we're going to be printing all of our parts on a Bamboo X1C, which comes with a full enclosure along with hardened steel parts. This will allow you to print car parts, including carbon and glass reinforced fiber filaments. The setup process is pretty simple, and you can even manage and view your prints wirelessly with a mobile device. Now, one of the most common filaments you're going to run into is PLA, which is starch based. This makes it super easy to print with and is great for parts around the house or even around the garage, but you're going to want to stay away from PLA for car parts if you don't want your part to end up like this. Now we previously printed this vent gauge in another video and you can see here that the PLA is actually starting to sag after sitting in the sun in our project car. So we're going to try something a bit different. But before we start printing, most filaments should be dried to get rid of any moisture from the factory. We typically use a heated dryer, but you could also heat up the filament in the X1C for a few hours too. And for our first print, we'll be using PETG High Flow, which hangs at the back of the printer, then feeds into the extruder. The printer takes care of the rest and even purges excess filament out the back of the printer automatically. Before you print, make sure you also have proper ventilation. The X1C does include a filter, but it won't catch everything. So we're using our fume extractor for extra protection. Now the printer is running pretty smooth, printing PETG, which is made with similar plastic found in water bottles and can handle up to 150 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the first few layers are completed, the printer speeds up significantly. All right, so here's our first project car part. This was printed in PETG and it's a door frame that's going to go into our BMW E30 build. We also printed it in ABS. So here you can see it looks very similar. And we're gonna now test the strength between these two filaments. So here's the first one, this is PET G. And it's gonna go right in here. Once the door is installed, these little clips will lock the part into place. So here's ABS and fitment is pretty good. What I'm worried about though are these tabs. Pretty strong. Let's see, how about these? Oh, the ABS just snapped. <laughs> okay, so the ABS seems to be a, a bit more brittle and that's gonna be a problem when we go to install the piece and slide these clips in. If, if they can just, you know, snap off just like that, it isn't going to work. PETG, on the other hand, seems to be a lot more difficult to break. The biggest difference between PETG, though, and the ABS filament is ABS can handle a bit more heat. So I am afraid that if the pet G is exposed to sunlight all day, that it could start to deteriorate. But I have one other filament that we can try, which is similar to ABS. So for this next filament, we put on a nice pair of gloves because we're gonna be using ABS GF, which uses glass fibers, and we don't want any fibers getting into our skin when we cut the filament. The glass does increase the strength, and temperature resistant goes from 188 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit, and we made sure to dry the filament before printing. Here's our ABS GF or glass fiber part. Fitment is nice, pretty good. So let's take a look at the tabs. So the tabs are not snapping right off, just like the regular ABS did. So this is the regular ABS where the tab snapped right off. And it does look like these are pretty strong. ABS GF, it's got some flex to it. So I think that ABS GF might be the winner. So now the real question is, will these filaments work just as well outside as they do inside? We found the perfect part online, this trailer hitch cover for our F-150. 
If you want to learn more about the basics of Bamboo Studio, we'll leave a link to our beginner's guide video in the description. For this next test, we're going to be using PET G, ABS, ABS GF, and this time ASA, which is similar to ABS, but with much higher UV resistance. The only problem is we have severe warping on the part. Now it's still a little chilly in the garage and ASA likes to print nice and warm. So we upped the bed temperature, preheated the printer and tried again. And here's the difference with preheat and higher heat. The part looks way better. So the fitment on these parts is pretty slick, but now we're going to test and see how well these external parts do in a bit of water. We went a bit extreme and decided to fully submerge all the parts in a bucket of water for three hours. Now we're going to be testing the weakest part on these 3D prints, which is these layer lines here. And we're going to do that by inserting our piece into our hitch and then using a jack to put pressure on this. Now, I know these are only for display. They're not necessarily for function, but it will be interesting to see the strength of each filament after it's been sitting in three hours worth of water. So first up is the PETG. Okay, one, two, three, four, Five, 17, 17, I'm hearing some sort of crack. 18, 19, 20. So let's back it down. All right, so PETG made it to 17 before we started hearing some cracking. Here you can see right here where the stress was being put onto the part. It's still holding together, but my guess is right in there, is where you can start to see some of the layer lines um, starting to stress. So now we're going to go with ABS. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We started hearing cracks. Oh, <laughs> seven, seven or eight, we're hearing cracks with the ABS. Let's just keep on going and see if we can get it to completely fail. 23, 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Where's 32? 34. <laughs> it cracked in multiple places. That part cracked. The tabs cracked. And we have a complete break. So let's throw on ABS GF next. 1, 2, 3, 16, 17, 18. I better put on some safety goggles. 25, 26, 27, 28. So first crack, 28, <laughs> oh shoot, 28. Let's keep on going. 29, 30, 31, 30. Ooh, 31. Next we have ASA. 11, 12, 13, <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 39, 40, 41, 41. It maxed out at 41. So the ASA held all the way together. So I'm curious, because we stopped at PET G. Let's see if we can put the PET G on and max the PET G out too. 31, 32, 33, 34. Oh shoot, 34. We could not max it out on the PET G. So I think we have a clear winner. So PET G didn't start cracking around, I believe, I could, if I remember right, 17 turns. Um, but then we stopped. We didn't go full throttle. We went back and went full throttle, but it couldn't make it all the way to the top of the jack. Here you can see it's actually br it broke in different sections. It didn't have a clean flat break. ABS, I don't remember exactly the numbers. I'll have to go back, but we couldn't max this one out either. Here it has almost a clean break in some spots. Next up is the ABS GF. So the ABS GF couldn't get maxed out either. And it almost completely broke. <laughs> and then we have ASA. So ASA did start to hear a little bit of cracks, but I was able to fully extend the jack without being able to rip this guy apart. 
where all the other ones failed. So this would probably be the best bet for you if you're looking for higher strength, better UV resistance. But honestly, I think we could make this look a little bit better. With the X1C, you can also 3D print parts in up to four filament colors using the EMS system. So we loaded it up with white, black, and red ASA filament and started printing a new hitch plate cover. I am so happy with how that came out. And we know with the ASA, it's gonna last. But what if you need a filament to handle even higher heat than on the exterior part? So we made some simple hose clips that we designed in the free version of Sharper 3D that we can 3D print. We're using it on an iPad, which reduces the learning curve. And if you're interested in how to make custom parts using a modeling software, let us know in the comments below. Get rid of that one. We've got PC, which can handle up to 240 degrees. And then we're gonna also install ABS, ABS GF, ASA, and just for kicks, we'll try PTG2. But then we also are gonna get parts even hotter by touching this part. We made some of these little lovely test clamps, which will fit right onto our upper radiator hose. Now that radiator hose is definitely gonna get much hotter than sitting on a hose that doesn't have any heat running through it. Putting on ABS, ABS GF, ASA, and here's the PC, which is the one that's pretty much rated for engine bay temps of up to 240 degrees. So let's grab Ashley and go for a test drive. You ready for the test drive, Ashley? All I'm saying is nothing better happen to this truck. We're fine. For now. Oh, wrong key. Okay. Would help if I had the right key. This is not starting off well. I am a little concerned though. I feel like uh, I'm not sure how some of these uh, filaments might do to the heat. We might want to pull over and check to see how they're doing, Ashley. You better pray that thing has not melted onto <laughs> my engine. Pray. So <laughs> do not use PETG in your engine bay. The next one has some flex too. This is ABS. It looks like it's got some flex to it. And PC, this is this will handle up to 240 degrees. So let's take a look. Uh, they're pretty close. Actually, yeah, so these two haven't flexed at all. So the PC and the ASA seem to be doing pretty well. We're gonna slap those back on. And you don't wanna go with these. Let's check out our next part. <laughs> all the clips seem to be doing okay. And I think that's primarily due to the fact that there's not a whole lot of heat right here. And these hoses aren't necessarily passing any heat through them. Putting one of the clips back on, I dropped one of them. Uh, she gone. Yeah, it's not on the ground and it's probably somewhere down in the abyss. So uh, It's going to melt to something in the car is what I'm hearing. <laughs> An unknown place in my truck. I think we'll be all right. You won't be. <laughs> all right made it back home. Let's see how they did. So the PC is well intact. The ASA looks like it did have some slight changes here. So in both cases for the upper radiator hose test clamp and our hose separator PC had no warpage at all. Now you may be able to get away with ASA for parts that aren't too hot, or you might even be tempted just to print everything in PC because it is UV resistant and it can hold up against water as well. But I'd say you'd wanna choose different filaments based on what you're trying to print. And the reason comes down to cost. So ABS and PETG are around $20 a spool, ASA goes up to 30 and PC doubles up to 40 from PETG and ASA. Now, if you wanna start making your own car parts using a 3D scanner, watch this video up next.